Okay. Very good evening to one and all present here. Today I would like to share the basic knowledge which I have learned the last couple of days. So my topic is Atlas Drupal with AngularJS. So today we can discuss about what is headless Drupal, why headless Drupal, then basics of Angular JS overview, and we'll have a small demo on it. So this is the center that we can share it now. So what is headless Drupal? Yes. So headless Drupal is nothing but front end is decoupled from Drupal. So everyone you can see that picture, right? So in that the man is don't have a head that is getting separated. Compared to Drupal, the team is getting separated. That is what we call as headless Drupal. So in case of headless Drupal, the user doesn't see the website directly. Instead, the user will realize their experience through some of the frameworks. So we have different kinds of frameworks, say AngularJS, React, etc. So main role of the Drupal will be a content storage and management. So this is what commonly head is Drupal. So this is a basic flow. Whereas for static web and CMS web and headless web. So basically a static HTML page will be interacting directly with the browser, the normal HTML content. In case whereas we are moving to CMS web, there will be a database and PHP logics which will get integrated to the browser. Moving to a headless web, there will be an integration of framework. So here I use this AngularJS. So this is what I have mentioned here. API okay. I'm using is JS, which fetches the data from the Drupal, which get interested to the browser. So why we go for headless? So few basic things I have found is for when one developer is getting developed a present page, it doesn't want to care about the packet. Only needs the uh, developer needs a data. I mean, the front end developer needs only a data. It doesn't want to care about the backend structure. What backend does, he don't want to care about it. So there will be a full control over the front end developer where he can manipulate the data and logic in front end itself. So there will be a no complex rules for a front end developer. So it will be a normally it will be a foster when going for implementing the headless Drupal. So how it is, we don't for go, we, we don't go for a server logic. Every logic will be in the front end logic, will make the site a little bit faster compared to normal Drupal site. So by implementing a headless Drupal, we can publish the data across various platforms. We can publish the data like uh, mobile devices, wherever. So uh, by user can feel their experience by which is flexible and it will be more Eight. In two ways, we can send the data to the content JS framework. So instead of splitting the HTML, the Drupal 8 split up the data. So in two ways, we can achieve it. One is by creating a REST API by views. Another one is we can achieve it by programmatically. By going so programmatically, we have, in Drupal 8, we have a Drupal console command. This is the command that which I pointed here. So this will generate the basic structure that the developer can implement the logic to fetch the data. So all the basic structure will get by the Drupal console command. So these are the two ways. In case of views, the main thing we need to consider about there will be a checkbox or creating a view. So that is what I have pointed in the uh, snapshot. So we have to give a URL which is needed to be exported through API. So mainly Drupal load. Drupal load. So in cloud, we, we all know that there is a platform as a service, software, software as a service. So coming to the content management system, there is a service called content as a service. So
So Drupal normally provides that content. So the role of the Drupal is to store the data where editors can manage and manipulate the data in the packet itself. So that will be an ease for um, editorial management, normally where the Drupal does. So Drupal is only needs to send the data to the API. So AngularJS. So AngularJS is a open source framework which is used for developing a dynamic web pages. So how the AngularJS can be implemented in a normal HTML page? is just by using a script tag that we call the JS. So by calling the JS, we can use the AngularJS app. So some features of AngularJS or directives. Directives are nothing but when the programmer developing, uh, develop, uh, developing the application, uh, will have like a, uh, you can know about that ng init, ng repeat. So we call that those things as directives. I will be showing a little directives for the demo and then expressions expressions is nothing but the where the output is getting printed so it has a certain format like we say curly braces inside the curly braces only we use to print the data and you just can see the output so that is what expression controller is nothing but the uh, controller controls the app which is defined in the application so First, when we send the data, okay, it was the object that it has its own methods and its properties. And then it's filters. Filters, we can say that, for example, in the output, we need as a fully uppercase or lowercase, or we need to change the date format, or we need to change the HTML, which is given in a packet, which is which needs to be printed in the front end as it is. So, for that, we can have some filters, which is uh, Develop in the front end where we can use the filters to get input data. So, as I mentioned earlier, directives. This are some example directives like ng app. So, ng app is nothing but that we define the application. So, anyone knows about what is ng? Yeah, it's uh, actually it's a module which is developed in Angular and they say as yes, ng is nothing but Angular. Mm, that module is getting loaded and the application starts running automatically from that level. So ng file ng file is nothing but updating the data to the HTML. And ng init ng init is means initializing the variables. ng repeat is what we can we are doing some grouping ones. So for that we use ng repeat. So these are the few <coughs> directives. So we can have a small demo. View which I have created. So few things we can consider as when we define the fields. So we have to define the alias of fields in which these fields will get in post span or uh, output of the these fields are usable to access the value of that data so i just created uh, a content type so when we go for programmatically normally we have a drupal core a rest api This is the programmatically which is I have created. So from here we can do the manipulations where we can use get method or post method, JSON, whatever the manipulation we can do it here. So just I'm going to create a content.
So I'm going to create two more content. And another content. So I have created three content. The three content is getting this picture. Just I use a frame set for the name, a header, the data we, which we manipulated in the backend, Drupal, and a simple footer. So there's an output of the data which I've shown here. So that's it. That's it.